Biscuits and tea. Thur, thur, thirty four. Biscuits and Tea Podcast. We're coming at you hot on a Monday morning. We're recording it really nice and hot and loud. Welcome in. We're going to be talking to you about all the we things on a Monday like morning podcast. podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> we have probably the greatest intro to, first off, any Biscuits and Tea Podcast. Oh, there's all these tea and biscuits. They're coming out of the woodworks. You guys know. like there, There's yeah, yeah, so yeah. many of them, and they are all shit. Awful. I listened to at least three of them. Awful. Awful podcast. I'll tell it to their all face of them. Too. Awful. I'll tell them all to their face. They want to come on biscuits and tea. Oh my god! I'll tell them straight to their face. You'll yeah. you'll probably have to set foot in England again, though. So I don't know if that's something I personally <laughs> would do. Yeah. I don't well, know. you don't have to go to Blackpool. <laughs> you don't have to go to Blackpool. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't, don't know. I don't know where. I don't think Shout I saw a Blackpool. single nice part of England. Yeah, you did. Maybe, well, did I don't you? think I saw a part yeah. where I'd want to go back to. Ooh. Really? Do you I want to name where you were, though? Well, well, I don't even know where I was. <laughs> yeah. I just know I didn't like you it. You did not get to see. Yeah, I don't. Let's just put it this way. There are definitely more hyped up places in yeah. England for you to go to. Yeah. Uh, I think we definitely missed out on the London. Like, you know, I, did, I know, Will, you've been there, obviously. Tyler, have you been to London? Yeah, plenty. No. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. You know, we both. <laughs> I've heard London is. I've heard London is dope. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. You know, I think Blackpool. I think it'll always have a place in our heart. Um, but nothing was ever. Re- nothing's ever really been the same ever since I I went to Blackpool and I came home. I've <laughs> never really been the same ever since. Life changing. It was pretty. <laughs> yeah, we had we had everything there. We really did. Oh, Some of the most shady interesting from the from the theme park just being this roller coaster is just anyone can walk up to your roller coaster and just unscrew any bolts and i want to and, film you know. a horror film like at that like that's where we're going to do our first horror film like our first short film like a 45 minute thing we're going to shoot a movie at that abandoned roller coaster arena place yeah like, the scary part about the roller coaster being open where everyone could take that is people from there probably actually could use parts of that roller coaster for things. Oh, like yeah. Like someone could go and actually no, turn some money just taking metal scrap from that amusement park. <laughs> Easy. Which I think is like a – it's a lucrative type of thing. It is. I know people railroads, yeah. people. Maybe that's who we yeah. should have on the podcast next. <laughs> Somebody who sells and steals – Scrap metals. That'd be interesting. I will. Is a matter. Oh, I can't pull that up. I thought. How the. How do I do pull this up? I can tell you who our next uh, podcast. I believe, based on the. Anyway, so we've got a. We've got a lady. A. She is. Let me just give you a background. I'll just give you her heritage first. She's Cuban, and Chilean. Okay. But born in Denmark. Uh, I believe, born in Denmark because she speaks Danish. And she's also a singer. Uh, She's got uh, quite the Spotify um, Does she sing in Danish or Spanish? She's singing in English. Oh. Oh, in in English and and Spanish. Maybe the world's language. The number one language back-to-back years. Yeah. And she has her own podcast... Where she, I'm hoping she'll want to invite us on after she comes on ours. Uh, but I'm, you know, more than likely she'll run away. Yeah. Like every guest does after they come on our podcast. They basically disassociate from us. Why did I? They can't handle the, the heat on the biscuits and tea. We dive into but the. Her, yeah. She talks a bunch of shit on everybody. Like she's just like, guys that take selfies, no. And like all this, it's she's actually perfect. She's perfect for our podcast. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a shit show. It'll be a good time, nice. You know, so, so hopefully, 
you tune in to that yeah keep it on your radar but before we leave england can we just tyler you want to break us down the sterling mishap here everyone's talking about this yeah we can show it we could show it i I think you just let it speak for itself if we're going to show it all right all right well then i'm going to watch it right now i'll watch it with well done oh jesus christ oh my god oh my god God. Guardiola's reaction is better than anything oh my god what happened oh that's gotta hurt oh man so i don't want to watch it anymore it's the issue here that what what would you've done differently will there's nothing to do differently. You could fall on your face and it would go in most of the time. It's there's, still not as bad there's as no Kai excuse. Kamara. Our good friend Kai Kamara, love him to death. Amazing, yeah. But there's never I remember been a that. worse one than that one. Like he'll always have. To. Yeah. We should show that one now. Tyler, should we? Yeah, let's. let's Tyler, have you seen yeah. it? Send it in let's, the. Let's pull that up. Here, though. All right. All right. So for the people who are obviously listening, that we were just watching people miss <laughs> open goals and this one is on youtube right now if you just type in the worst miss of the century is what it's called i was at it's the called game. the worst i was at this game you were there i was at the oh, game. oh no what was the what was the attitude like in the uh, stadium well you know americans are just confused about soccer in general most of the time like they just the only <laughs> time they ever yell or scream or anything at games is when the ball goes in the back of the net Otherwise, it's just a 90 minutes of confusion for 90% of the crowd. So there was not like an immediate reaction to what happened there. They had no idea. Like most of the crowd had no idea. Oh, okay. You know, it's just one of these things okay. that happened at the game. Obviously, like we saw it on the replay and we were like, oh my God, like that has that sucks for that guy. Like and Kai Kamara was oh per, like God. kind of popular in Kansas City, but not. Like he wasn't like a household name right. yet. He eventually became like the most popular player uh, on the Wizards, hmm. you know, Sporting KC. He never, I don't think he ever played for yeah, yeah. Sporting. Like he was only with the Wizards. Same club. It's oh, man. Be, but yeah. What yeah, a... poor guy. Poor guy. He eventually, he pulled himself through it though. He definitely did. He jokes about it now. I mean, there's nothing to do. It's hilarious. That's yeah. the only way to look at any open miss. It's just dumb not to take it. Tyler, are you seeing that? No, I, I need it to be sent on Google. Hang it on. is. It's not. Yeah. Oh, on Skype. Oh, my God. Too. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's, yeah, I see. It needs to be sent to hang out. Yeah, yeah so the dude just, he swings, and I think it's one of those things is when you rush, you know, when you get excited because the ball's there, and you just rush and you swing, and dude. he just happened to do something illegal. <laughs> he swings through it, and uh, his arm just hits, like, literally on the goal line. Oh, my God. On the goal line. It's oh bouncing in. Like, it's almost, I think that if he wouldn't even have touched it, I'm pretty sure it may have rolled into the goal. But he, <laughs> he misses it and just knocks That's it true. over. <laughs> and then oh. he's just trying. He's going to the referee. He's like, please, please, please. No, no, no. I didn't do anything I know. wrong. It's like, <laughs> please no, let me have this. You. We all saw you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Does he go to the most replay? Yeah, you need to, you need to go to the, don't it. worry, the replays. The replays will take care of it for you. Don't worry. But we'll, we should, when he comes on, do we bring this? He'll be yeah. cool to talk about it. We have Kai's to ask a friend. Him about it. Yeah, we have to ask him about it. Guys, yeah. no, that ball is going yeah. into the goal. That ball is already I going I don't think in. it is. Yeah. I don't think it is. I, I think because if you watch right before he hit it, I think in his backspin coming back out. I think it has a the ton de- of. The defender, the Galaxy defender, may have been able to go through and then kick it out. That's Yes. Because yeah. look, when it's. Look at it just – it has a lot of backspin on it because you can see how it hits the first time and it's coming like straight down. Watch it like it's coming yeah, straight. It's I think it's going to come backwards a bit and it's hard to tell if him hitting the top of the ball. Well, if he hit the top, it should put top spin on it. Um, I, th- I, I think I'm it's coming out to the defender. I think the defender would have been able to – obviously he would have been able to take it. I'm going to take a biscuits and tea hard turn left here, and I want you to get a comment from the Canadian yep. here. I'm going to need to know, sir. I'm going to need to know why the headline that I saw, I think yesterday or the day before, said 
Canadian woman. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I, I, you may have seen this headline. Canadian yeah. woman. Uh, what's the? Why can't I think of the word? Not injects. Infects. How do you infect someone? Is infect? Yes, infect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Canadian woman infects five hundred and fifty men mm. with COVID in a strip club. Nice. One stripper. One stripper in Canada. What's going on? We need a. I think we need a Canadian report because I feel like they were doing fine. But if that's happening at one strip club, also who's going to a strip club right now? Horny people. Yeah, I mean, really during COVID, is that it? I guess I didn't think that you could go to strip clubs and just like be touching people like that. So what's going on at these uh, Canadian social strip distance? Clubs? <laughs> that's the real question here. <laughs> Are they have? Do they? Do they have social distancing in strip clubs right now? Are people like, are la- are lap dances like, like, uh, how is that working? This is a legit question. This is, I didn't think about this. What's going on? Yeah. No, what if they just have like a like toilet seat type setup? So you. What do you mean? <laughs> a toilet seat. So you have, what do you mean? You have, like, you have like a cover that you put over you. Oh yeah, <laughs> just, and just the toilet, and just the just the opening yeah. on your lap. You sit but, down, yeah. you sit down in it, and like they like put like this plastic bag over you in the chair, and they vacuum seal it so it's tight up against you, and the stripper gets on. <laughs> We've solved it. You just gotta condomize. You gotta condomize your your, lap your, your customer. Yeah, what is I Canada mean, doing? Uh, Come on, let's be a little innovative. I don't know. Let's be a little innovative. We can't have I just, strippers. I saw it and I... With the COVID. They were, they were doing... I don't know if it's just Canada. I think it was the US. They were doing like drive through strip club things before. Where it'd be... What? It's like drive through Like you'd what? grab some food and you'd go drive through something and then the strippers would just be dancing on the side. You'd stay there for like 10 minutes no, and you'd go on your I way. Need, I need... No, no. How do I Google this? How do I Google this? What drive through strip club? Would be like, best guess. Drive drive through COVID COVID drive through strip club. But why? 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 People are that, horny. I don't think you understand this. Stop I know, going. Have you ever right, heard drive. of porn? Like, have you ever heard of Pornhub.com? Like, if you're that horny, you don't need okay. to go drive through. Like, it's the 19th. I got it. Oh no! All right. So this is something. I hope we don't get pulled down from YouTube if we show this. <laughs> but I'll put it in the group. It looks like this is in uh, Portland or. Uh, yeah, hold on. Here you go. All right. Check that out. Content warning. Adult themes. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. A local event. Let this be a warning. Yeah, but this is the Not news. Not a podcast for uh, eight year old kids. <laughs> music, lighting, yeah. Sound, stages, but this is poles, ridiculous. And now we have I guess. Or should I be? Window. This is their job. So should I be? I don't know if people are going to pay their social distancing. I don't or see what. He, right. Unless you have the issue with it I, to yeah. start with. But no. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I. I can't. This, is, this just looks like America to me. This is how we saw. This is how we would solve this problem. It does. Yeah. And then we bring your food out to you, and then you. Yeah. Yeah. So you just away. dance. You. you they cook food, food and. And, over. and yeah, and then they're just strippers, and they all have masks, and the bodyguards have masks, and they give you some toilet paper. They give you rolled toilet paper. <laughs> 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 yeah. And you, <laughs> okay. Oh my God. And then the the. Did you guys see the uh, end screen pop up? Out of work strippers are delivering food through Uber Eats. That's Not awesome. Uber. We've just Uber eats. That's innovative. Create this niche so it's like a mobile Hooters. And the, the yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Is this again in Oregon? It. What's Do going they, on in Oregon? Pretty awesome. Do the strippers come into this the, just the apartment? And like, is there more they do I, with the food? I would, like, I would <laughs> guess no. No, oh my God, it's literally called Boober Eats. It's the same. It's the same strip club. It's the what same. What are they driving? Lucky, the lucky devil. What is? Our, yeah, okay, well, if this is already on YouTube, then there's no way they could pull us for no, putting. This is from us. March too. This is this was early oh. before people just gave up. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Before people just gave up. Everyone's just like, yeah, ah, fuck. Whatever. Whatever. Well, <laughs> yeah, good on these go. guys. 
Yeah. For for at least being entrepreneurial. I mean, how many of the rest of them just shut down? And I, also, like, that's a good, you know, from the dancers to be open to that. Can you delivering get, food when you were? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, hmm. Tyler, you might be able to answer this. Um, what is the appeal to eating at strip clubs? Like, I always hear people talk about, like, around here, they're like, yeah, go over to the strip club for lunch and on a Tuesday afternoon and get their burger special and you get, you know, half price beers. And, like, these guys are from the corporations and they're, like, just driving over there, going to the strip club, like, eating a meal and, like, at the strip club and then just going back to work. Like, is that actually a thing? Like, I don't, like, I've been to strip clubs and eating a burger is definitely not one of the things that comes to mind. <laughs> when you're Let's break it down. Let's do it. This is what biscuits and tea does. We solve the weed and cigarettes thing. Let's solve strip yeah. clubs. Yeah. I think their food is generally really cheap. So that's one. Okay. One positive. Interesting. I've never I, I eaten at a strip club, so I don't know what the quality. Neither have I. Like. Neither have I, which is why it makes yeah. us perfect because we're experts. <laughs> we're experts at it, so we should be. We can solve this. Uh, I think also, it's just the allure and appeal of having. Depends on the strip club, right? Uh, I would imagine, but yeah. supposedly attractive women serving you food and being around and wanting you for attention, and it's like this extreme escape. Like because these guys, like we're we're painting the guys that are going there. What are these corporate these corporate guys that maybe don't enjoy yeah, yeah, yeah. necessarily what they're doing? And so this escape, it's better than just going to McDonald's, <laughs> right? Because you're going to sit at McDonald's I, for an hour, or is yeah. that it? I could see it like opening people up if you're actually trying to discuss deals and stuff too. Like you're already in this kind of weird environment where then That's- you're not going to be as like sheltered with what you say. You'll probably be more open in general. That's true. I see. So it's a but that's a different that's a, tactic. Yeah. So you're so you're you're proposing Maybe. that the next time we want to sell an advertisement or do a partnership with somebody, we just round them all up, everybody, put them in a van, all go to the strip club, and we'll land that deal. <laughs> well, our first step would be curing COVID, but yeah, that'll be step two. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could not. I there's no way I'm going near a strip club during COVID. You know. What a, that is the last place I think you want to go uh, during a pandemic. I would take that over a sporting event. Uh, You think so? If people are there, yeah. I don't, I don't know. There's always like a thick, there's less people in those places. And Uh, that's actually true. Yeah. The indoors, yeah. Indoors wouldn't be ideal. Yeah. It's all mess. But also, by the way, uh, are you uh, seeing the latest news on Sweden, Tyler? And their herd immunity tactic that you were Guess very it's against. Not going Americans, what are they saying? Like every time I talk about Sweden here, Americans get mad. Yeah, it's going well. Numbers and cases dropping. Well, you guys are testing. But the number of – well, it doesn't matter. There's still people going into the hospital. There were people dying of, of COVID and, and all of that stuff. Yeah, well, let me it's, see how your deaths are doing. It's uh, It's been dropping, and so there's a bunch of new articles coming out. Number one, here's the thing that I said originally. They do not want they, – they don't want to deal with a massive recession, and they are going to be most likely the only European country to not go into – a recession. The, wow. So that is phenomenal of a thing to have done. I you know? don't think I, – I would assume Norway didn't enter a recession either. They just well, it's so not out yet. Apparently, apparently, apparently it, uh, what they would define a recession as a certain amount of loss in your GDP over the two quarters. And I don't remember if the one like, like London's is just massively – Reduced yeah, they, as was I, Germany, I would, as was all of these others. You know, I would just do Norway. I think like an absurd amount of their GDP comes from oil, which wouldn't be affected by this at all. I would imagine. I would imagine oil's been massively affected. Who's oh, no, had, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, okay. 
it's, gotta, it's massively affected. It's gonna be huge. All these all those things got stopped and dropped and there's less travel. It's just gonna be completely, you know? So that's phenomenal, if true, you know. I don't know whether or not I, I have no idea. Well, I don't know. Work. I don't know anything about Croatia's economy, but I don't think there was a huge uh, tourism. Tourism, tourism definitely, but they I mean I think they still get a decent amount of tourists because they didn't close for tourists. Coffee shops, uh, gambling, and what's the other one they do? Yeah, but tourism. <laughs> uh, bakeries. You're missing bakeries. 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 <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Overall, but no, less people are traveling anyway. It still looks like, but the U.S. still looks like a, an entire... Oh, my God. We need to... We haven't talked about... We normally get into at least one political thing. Last time we talked about Trump and TikTok. Yep. Kamala Harris. Yep. I was actually going to bring it up. I remember when I, yeah, B and I were talking about it, but you you brought some stuff uh, up to me. Our f- first black <laughs> vice president. Whoa. Hey, said, whoa. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, no. whoa. Let's throw some love to India, man. What the hell? <laughs> Everyone, the people are just going, yep, first black president. And what's going on with that? She's half Indian. Yeah, half I mean, vice black. president. Yeah, vice president. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? Mm-hmm. So disrespectful. Shame on you. Yeah, Indians? I don't know. Shame all of. Shame on all of you. <laughs> Canceled. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, to the Indians. Yeah, he's saying because. Well, no, it's just, and we all know what's going on. It's nothing but a marketing yeah. ploy. It's this is what is needed. That's one of the reasons. And clearly, it's not the only reason she's there. No one's saying that, but it's one of the things. She's black. There's a massive <laughs> Black Lives Matter movement. This yeah. massive, you know, this is a huge talking point. So we're going to talk about how she's black. Like you can imagine, what's that? What's that one politician who has like 0.01 Native American in her? <laughs> Elizabeth Warren, yeah, and yeah. she's always talking about how she's. And I, with the Cherokee <laughs> tribe, we used to hunt, and we were all in the nature. Uh, okay. Shut up. You yeah. have zero Native American. I feel like you. it's a really – yeah, she's really good to you know work with Joe Biden on this thing to hopefully try to overtake the, the crazy man. But, man, I hope that she's able to, yeah. to help him out enough because I'm about to send you guys a clip of uh, – I don't know if you've actually okay. seen this yet, but it's Joe Biden sure speaking at a uh, – it's not recently. I think it was about a year ago when he did this or maybe previous maybe, – You've probably seen it, Tyler, but it's freaking weird, dude. I don't know if Joe Biden's all there. I think it's really... (laughs) Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's really cool. I think it's awesome that we're actually going to possibly have the first president that's 163 years old. You know, I think that that's... What? Is he not? Is he he older than that? You know, it's pretty much the same of who gets elected. I think Trump's like three years younger than him. No, wait, wait, wait. Trump is on whatever they got him on, though. And that's the truth. Like, let's be real. That dude, you don't go, oh, Trump, old. I was just having this conversation. You don't say, oh, Trump, he's old. You go, Trump, he's crazy. Trump, he's, he yeah. says whatever he wants to say. I don't know. You don't, I, I mean, no. I think senile, which is a pretty much direct association with old. Uh, senile dudes are more like, I don't fucking care about this. I don't care about that. I'm so... Uh, uh, uh. He cares. He's That dude's on whatever they got him on, that fake speed, that... that <laughs> Legal, legal speed. They got him running on, you know. Yeah, what is he taking? It's just well, like, do you think he does cocaine something. weekly? Like, what would you, <laughs> would you put? No, he, what are the odds? I don't know. No, not cocaine. I think he's on. He's on a legal, like whatever. If it's not Adderall or some, he's on something like that, you know, to make sure to even him out. He might be on like a little, little upper, a little downer, little, little to the left side, little to the right side, a little diagonal. He's on so you, stuff. Think, you think he's on like a bootleg? You've seen Limitless? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Have yeah. you seen he's on like a bootleg Limitless drug where it yes. just makes you think you're that smart, but it doesn't give you actually any of the brain power of it? <laughs> it just gives you the energy and the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> it just gives you the confidence. The I think he, he's, he's, he's nothing if not uh, confident, you know, and he definitely has energy, but. I guess we don't see him throughout I, the day. I don't know how confident you'd even say he is. Because he oh, – yeah. when I think of a confident person, like when they're asked a hard question or something, they don't just 
ignore it and pretend they didn't hear it and then walk off a stage. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny though. Cause he, uh, if cause he doesn't he win, I'm going to miss that. He he runs from pretty much like every confrontation with someone who can actually challenge him. He just leaves. I know that had to be. Was that Croatia? Was that- yeah. Fuck okay, that. there we go. Fuck that person. With their fucking muffler. God, I hate that shit. Yeah. Every, still, Seriously. every god dang evening, there's these idiots who ride by dirt bikes at like nine o'clock at night on a like last night Sunday night. We're relaxing, chilling, having a really nice time. Watch, and then just right by the freaking window. I'm just like, what are you doing? I don't know what we. I was just gonna say, what would be without hurting them? How could we get back at these people? Like, we need to end this. It needs to stop being. I hear it all the time over here, too. Just, what are you? You can't. We have to figure something out. Find out. There's gotta find out where they live. And try to embed a bunch of really loud microphones into their walls and everything. And just <laughs> just have them play it for like a second. Just like a second, oh. two seconds at night. So they can't find out where they are. And if you put like six of them in, it will sound like it's coming from all directions. And you just you mean speakers, flip it on not for two. But... Yeah, speakers. Yeah, not microphones. Speakers. Yeah, yeah. Put them okay. on for two, three seconds. Turn them off. And just do that like That's twice it. a night. But the same sound, the same sound that yeah, they torture sound. all Actually, of us yeah, with. You record, uh, yeah, you record bad. their car. You record their car, <laughs> and then you put that <laughs> back into their walls. <laughs> and you just pl- – that's not bad. I, that would be – it. That would actually be pretty fun, at least for one dude. Like if they, like they, these guys who are doing it, be, it's probably the same people. If it's around you wow. and you hear it all the time, it's yeah. you know to find out who they are and then just play that sound. You wait for them to get home. I would do it more than once, though, Tyler. Like, I would just the second I'd well, be willing just, to go to jail. Oh no, you just well, you do it more than once. I'm saying you would just do it once or twice a night, so they can't find. It just it's like that. Uh, I see. You know, yeah. just slowly poke them, poke them, poke them, like just five just, seconds. Yeah, just play for five the, seconds, and then the goal is so they can't find out where they are. So you can keep it going on right. for as long as hard right, as long as possible. Well, hard right on the biscuits Uh-oh. and tea Uh-oh. podcast. Travis Hard Kelsey right coming in. Travis Kelsey with the Kansas City Chiefs signed long term. No one gives a Oops. shit. Oops. Oops. Thought and we couldn't uh, pay. I thought we I couldn't pay our... anybody. I thought Kansas City well, they weren't gonna be able to pay anybody. We okay, you have two players now. Good job. Now you have uh, now you have a quarterback and a tight end. We signed Chris Jones the week before. Now oh my gosh. Sammy Watkins resigns. Oh, Sammy Watkins. Oh, has he what's his wow. last thousand yard season? Uh we don't need him to get a thousand yards. We have fifteen amazing players on our offense that all share the ball and want to win championships. See the Washington football team, I completely understand it's all about individual statistics. <laughs> the Washington ball team. The Washington football oh, team. <laughs> I thought he okay, said Washington we- ball team is like taking away the foot too. We just got to remove everything from that Washington team. The Washingtons. Oh gosh. Oh God. No, it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate tower. though. It's even funnier. I just, I, I mean, I wouldn't. You what? and what? Sammy that's Watkins a huge, that's huge news. Sammy that's Watkins huge news. isn't a player I'd hype up. Well, that's fine. I, we like don't, we hype up the team. Story. We hype up the team. So it's fine. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go watch the Super Bowl highlights, what uh, what Sammy Watkins can provide you, uh, go ahead and go check the highlights yeah. out. I'm sure that you could probably get a refresher on what's going on here because <laughs> I believe the Kansas City Chiefs play the Washington football squad this year. Is that correct? <laughs> oh, do we? Do we? Let me uh, let me double check this real quick. That's um, going to be quite something. You guys barely, you guys barely got by us last time. Okay. Well, that's fine because in the end, in the end, all we all we care about is our ring and oh, sorry, rings because like like we said before rings. the last Super Bowl. Oh yeah, that's right. Because before the last Super Bowl, like we said, we're going to win this Super Bowl and we're going to have rings. Four. Oh, sorry, because we all we actually almost got close and we should have actually won at least at least zero zero two at least. It. Two. We should have had. We should, right now we should have two, and so we're gonna have rings, Tyler. Like we're gonna fill out. We're no, gonna we fill out play. ten fingers. We don't play them. 
Yeah, they're scared. I heard they were scared. Yeah, we don't. Does this suck also as as Washington? One of the worst things I think is as a capital to be had to have a, a an empire that's crumbling and your football team is like they're trying to get rid of the owner. No one wants him. No one wants the dude. Every headline is, "Can you please, sir? Could you please just leave? <laughs> Could you please just leave?" They're like, "Bill, that's, Bill, that's been going Mr. Snyder, for like years. we'll pay you so much money. Just leave." They will. He just will make money if he, if he sells a team. He will literally make so much money, and everything no, he, stressful or wrong in his life will go away. He doesn't yeah. care. No, it wouldn't, because all he cares about is the team. Exactly. No, his team. Exactly. Exactly. That's the yeah. the issue. Yeah. Yeah. I will say he is like he's a piece of shit. The only good thing about him is he will put money into the team. He'll throw whatever. He doesn't spend it right, but he throws. Mm. At least he's one of the guys. There's some owners that just try to skimp so much on. Yeah. Yeah, what they do, but he's still he's. If he just threw his money out at people and then just let someone who actually knew what they're doing, who's run the sorry. front office, it'd be all. Who's the richest NFL owner? Jerry Jones. Is he really? Is he? Oh, dude, they're huge. They're like bigger. Like they're top five and largest sports organizations in the world. Like they're. Up I up, know up they're up huge, dude. I like there. that dude. I like his. I like his attitude. Jerry Jones. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just I don't know anything about. Maybe he's he's may, worth eight point five billion. Eight point five billion dollars, Jerry Jones. He's a president. I like I him. For. I don't yeah, know. Maybe I'd vote for him. If he was running for president, yeah. I'd vote for Jerry Jones. <laughs> you can't vote for Jerry. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the movement. <laughs> He'd have <laughs> such just <laughs> absurd rules. Oh gosh! Yeah, what do we? What would Jerry Jones? What do you think his first law is like? What do you think he? What do you think he want to bring in? He'd, he'd move the capital to Dallas, obviously. <laughs> I think he'd probably try giving abortion the death penalty would be a big, big <laughs> thing on his docket. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. I think he'd, uh, football. Just, he'd obviously try to just maybe try to globalize the sport. Maybe he would cancel all imports with other countries until they develop their own football team or something. You know, just something really drastic like that to grow the NFL world power, the world yeah, most powerful dude. sport. You'd probably try to buy out every other major league in the U.S. and just dissolve it just so football is the only thing left. All right, I got a question for you guys. In 1989, Jerry Jones bought the Dallas Cowboys. The team is now currently valued at $5.5 billion. How much money? Did he pay in 1989 for the Dallas Cowboys? 120. 2.5 million. All right. Tyler was closer. B, you were so far off. It's not even fun. 150 million. What did I say? 120? Yeah, you said 120. Oh, you said 120 million? Unbelievable. No, that's a crazy. That's like kind of similar to what uh, the Royals recently, they. Uh, I can't remember what they bought the team for, but they sold it for an ex- huge return on the investment, <laughs> like astronomical. It's okay. crazy to think that we like, sold the, the Royals. Sold? Yeah, the Royals got sold by uh, David Glass to a little gentleman who's an entrepreneur out of Kansas. I think his name's lost him Sherman. I think okay. they sold it for a bill, two bill, maybe. By the way, you guys are wrong about Jerry Jones being the richest. Oh, he isn't. David Tepper? Yeah. David Tepper. 14 Bill. Wow. Oh, he owns Charlotte FC. Charlotte FC. What? Which They're team? They're in the oh, MLS. I'm Maybe so confused. An team. I mean, I knew they were working on this. Uh, Apparently, they're in. Are they? MLS is all over the place as, as well with their, yeah, we're just going to have a couple extra teams 10 years later. All right, every state's going to get a team by 2025, and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, I went to Carnegie I'll Bowl. tell you what, the league that has the potential to be like a huge in return on investment like this, like you think about, okay, the NFL, everyone always just sees what the NFL is now, and it's one of the biggest sports leagues in the world, and teams are worth billions of dollars and this, this, and this. But at at a time, the NFL was not 
huge. It was like the USL. Like it was, it was like a tiny little <laughs> league and the dudes were morons who worked normal jobs and smoked cigarettes on the sidelines. And it was not what it is today, but obviously they've been able to develop yeah. these franchises and all these corporate deals are huge now. And I was just I thinking, mean, you know, although the other night we're talking about a league that has the potential to kind of take off like that indoor soccer in the United States, obviously outdoor soccer, soccer. Has, a, has a lot to do to grow, but over the next eight to 10 years, I think indoor soccer is the most consumable soccer product that Americans could really, again, get behind. You have all the research and the data from the 80s, 70s, how big it was then. With what we have now, it was holy big. crap. I don't really think it's a fair comparison, though. Why not? The NFL, I, mean, I mean, no. I mean, like, it's a huge, a huge part of that, not from when it started, like in the 50s, but a huge part of that was also like television starting to get more and more popular and everything. It didn't have all these things to push it when it first started, where One so even now, other. just once the internet like popped up uh-huh. and everything just. I don't know because I don't know enough about football's rise. I mean, I know basketball went through the same thing. A lot of those those major sports that we talk about, obviously, and baseball's had the longest run, right, as far as the American sports go, uh, before being legit. I mean, then there was split. Well, obviously, they were splits. Black dudes were playing in one league, and then, you know. But uh, the problem you have now from the time, well, we do know, all of us here know of some indoor soccer players who aren't quite up the top level, but they happen to play in the top level. One of the issues you have is the watering down though, be because of the opportunities because in the eighties. So when my dad was playing there, do you know who he's playing with? So you got national team players, boom, one, all these Eastern European dudes, they're all super big national. Like the level there is it's, it's, it doesn't even compare to what's there now. You probably have t- two or three teams in the entire yeah. indoor league with that type of level. That's the, that's an issue. If they can siphon, you'd need money. Yeah. It, 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 honestly though, you're right on the investment side though. You could, for a, what it, the dude paid 150 million, you could pay 50 to hundred, hundred yeah. K for a team and walk away with. Yeah. Like very if, you, big if you set it up correctly, where like you could get the right investors to come in and really in, in vet, like, you know, inject yes. good capital into it so you can get good players and then start developing good media around yes. it and kind of follow the esports model not so much about putting people in the stands and putting people there actually but developing a streaming system that is viewable by people so they can then start using you know all kinds of gambling sites and all that kind of stuff because there's so many goals there's so much action it never ends right. like hockey you know and I think that that would – it's physical. It's kind of like – you know, you, it's more like American football. Like I really think that people don't know how much they would love indoor soccer. And that environment, when you get people crazy about it, that that's fun, man. Weather Dome. Is this – are you are you trying to introduce the Weather Dome into, mm-hmm. into a bit of in- – <laughs> Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus. We need to get a mock up. We need to have somebody on who could really help us kind of develop out You're that right. idea. Uh, uh, why don't we just, uh, we. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Google's acting ridiculous right now. But why don't we? So, okay, guess we have potentially coming on. Crypto Casey, I will, I will haunt you until you say yes. You oh, will got- get on this podcast she has to now i already got spam botted by her i thought that i was having a conversation with her she has like 15 different accounts that are all like hackers coming after anybody who followed her come on crypto i mean that's pretty interesting because yeah cryptocurrency i don't know do either you guys know anything about cryptocurrency not a single fucking thing i know it's a bit late where i invest in any of it I mean, there's always new things popping up, and the volatility of Bitcoin is absolutely insane. Like the Bitcoin, at sometimes it's pretty stable now. I mean, it it's, tends to be growing over the course of. I'll tell you what, though, and you can you can invest fractionally. What I mean is, you don't Bitcoin. I think right now costs like eleven thousand 
five hundred dollars, something like this, for one Bitcoin. You can invest. No, yeah, you just in, put in however much money you want to put in. Yeah, you could. I'm just saying, over the course of time, it looks like crypto, because the whole thing is, oh, is it going to last? Is Bitcoin? Is it going to be around? Are we going to use this and all that? And it's going to be around. It looks like it's going to be around. It's yeah. like Google. It's not going anywhere right now. <laughs> you know. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about is it going to be worth what I bought it in it at? <laughs> That's all investments, though. That's all investments. Yeah, most likely. It looks like, though, it's becoming more useful for this entire society. And if not, you can just go buy things on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just go get some some guns or some, some, you know, whatever it is you can get on the dark web and you'll be fine. Have you guys ever been on the Honestly, dark web? I, I, yeah. I have. What is it? Uh, I've never done have it you before. Have you not? No. What is it? What is it like? Oh, wow. It, should, it really just opens you up to different websites that you can't find. On. That's it. That's and it. there's the majority, the apparently. The way it works, there's... You've got the... I don't know what they call it, but if you think of it as like a mountain, you have at the top what would appear above the mountain, everything that's uh, normal, Google, searchable, stuff like that. And then as you go down underwater, maybe, now you've got like this first level... And you go down, so you got dark web, and then I believe you have deep web. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe it's like that. So there's just this scaling down of things that you can't normally get. So you have to get on a complete separate browser. You can't use yeah. Chrome or Google. You have to use. Yeah, you need a VPN, and you need something called Tor. Gotcha. Or there's other ways, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's. I don't know. I mean, you remember that that entire case, dude, where the the Silk Road, that dude that was selling drugs entirely on the dark web. You know that? <laughs> what happened to him? He had some absurd amount of money that he made from that. He made this dude made so much money. You know what happened to him? He actually got caught, but not because of the things that were going on not online, like they didn't. Like the FBI or the CIA tried to make it look like we can find anybody who's on the dark web. No, they can't. They, they literally couldn't figure it out. It was good, like, old-fashioned police work. Uh, you know, <laughs> they, like, had to find other ways of getting it because they could not trace it. It was this young dude, and he's in jail, and they made an example of this dude. Like, he's in, I think he, I don't know if he's in for life, but he's in for a long time. We he has to be in for life. The way, the way the U.S. deals with drug trafficking, there's, there's no way that he's not in for life. Yeah, he's in he's in trouble. I don't know, Silk Road kid. Yeah, some dude from the West Coast, though, right? I think that's what it, he's. Uh, so on May 29th, two thousand fifteen, he was sentenced to double life imprisonment plus forty years without the possibility of parole. And uh, because though they said that he paid seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars in a murder for hire deal targeting at least nice. five people because they threatened to reveal who he was. His nice. name's Ross Ulbricht. Holy crap. I never understand those people. Like if I started the Silk Road, once it got to a certain point where you have enough money, which would have been probably pretty early for him to just dip and just yeah. do whatever you want for them. So why do you stay in that? I don't know. Because he's something so risky. Like, why would you not get $100 million, which I'm sure he had, <laughs> super quick? Not enough. And just dip. And I'll just go sit on $100 million. I don't. That's a good question. Maybe he didn't know how to get it out. It was a different time. This is Bitcoin wasn't huge. Like, we didn't have all the things that we had back then. Maybe you couldn't because now you can, like, figure out to get your Bitcoin. You can. He, There's a lot of places. If he stuff. started that whole thing, he could have he could have sorted something out. There's he no way he could have yeah. sorted something out. Yeah, yeah. How much Ross Ulbricht? How much did he? He made uh, twenty eight point five million dollars at the time he was arrested. Wow. Oh, so he didn't have as much as actually I thought he had. Yeah, that's not enough. I mean, what are you going to do with $30 million? No, you can't no, do anything. I, would, I guess I would have kept going for more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, let's not get greedy, but like we need at least $50 million if I'm going to live. I don't know how I've been surviving without $50 million in my life. What a guy. There's got to be something like this going on now, too. I'm sure. You know, some new Silk Road, like the drug. Dude, I, I, I saw some documentary that we've injected like some sort of billions of dollars into uh, 
what do you call it? The war on drugs. Mm. It's not working. The war on drugs is not working. No, it's as everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not working. We're not winning any war on drugs. It's kind of like our war. I did we win the war on terror? Wasn't that Bush's yeah. war? Is that over? Yeah, we, we killed. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we, we killed. We killed Hussein, and then there is no more terror. We hundred percent won that. Terror is over. So, That's how that yeah. works, right? Okay. Let's go. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, the war on terror. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, what's we the even next got thing? a bonus. We even got a. <laughs> we even got a bonus one with uh, Gaddafi. We actually won like twice. It's like we won, <laughs> and then they came back like, "Hey, can we get a rematch?" And we won again. And <laughs> just it's over. Yeah. <laughs> we're the war on terror what a hilarious thing the war yeah, on war drugs on, yeah, has I been know. going on since what the mid 80s 70s, 70s? I, mean, I don't know 80s. so that, it would have been great. Ronald Reagan right think, Ronald Reagan started the like, war on drugs I think so yes yeah I Ronald so. Reagan I would guess like 70 million. yeah Ronald Reagan followed by Bill Clinton and people don't realize how much Bill Clinton screwed over the African American community with some of the freaking laws that they put in place on a crack. Dude, right. it doesn't matter. He could, yeah, but do you see him play the saxophone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does. He plays the saxophone. Uh, the war on drugs started on June 18th, 1971. Yeah. Uh, and it was, nice. it was one uh, in, it appears that when Trump was elected, we won the war on drugs. That's what he's claiming. <laughs> <laughs> and we won <laughs> I'm elected and we've won the war on drugs now moving on yeah do you think we're gonna legalize uh like nationwide because you know gambling it. is becoming this whole nationwide we're slowly getting towards that NFL's got to continue to increase that bottom line so we're yeah. gonna get that gambling in there we're gonna turn them to a trillion dollar industry Whoa. you know what they found out, or what they've known, is everybody would just use Canadian companies to gamble. And they're like, "Well, why is Canada getting all of our money?" <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I think it's a great move. I'm not. I'm not at all against it. I just. It's so crazy that it's just becoming a like a thing here, where it's like it's so integrated into, based on what you guys have told me, it's so integrated into the leagues and what people do and the culture and just everything. If you're watching sports, you're gambling. And like, that's just not the way it is here. You know, there's only, there's people who do that, obviously, but it's not like so publicly known, you know, and it's more of like a thing that a guy in his 20s, you know, does on his, you know, in his spare time that not very many people yeah. will, you know, participate in. So it's kind of interesting to hear that it's not like that over there and that it's, I just, they're kind of behind here, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly, I love I, it. Yeah, I knew it. I yeah, love I just own like two, two, to, two to five dollars on a game, and you get like an hour and a half of entertainment. If you win, you're going to be able to then like get more. It just, I use it straight as a source of entertainment yeah. where you have like fifty dollars in a bank roll, and it's really not trying to win money. You're trying to get just that number to increase, and just I don't know. It's like yeah. a game. You just outsmart Vegas when you win a game on betting. You just feel like so smart. <laughs> Speaking of games, by the way, uh, Manchester United lost yesterday. Who they lose? What? I won. I won that wet bet with both teams to score. It they, was over in thirty minutes. How is poor Manchester? Dude, United. they can't score. I know they can't score against Copenhagen. Like in this game, they just literally cannot score. They get yeah. so many chances, and nobody can put it away. It's been a long time for them to be this bit this rebuild. It's too long. Like Sir Alex Ferguson stepped down. I don't know when the last time they won the we EPL. Need to take over. I don't know when the last time. Yeah, maybe they need. Maybe you guys want to call us back in. Like we've already showed you, we we understand the game. You Do know, you think, we were teaching your players different notes and things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what? they had to edit out. They had to edit out me telling Sergio Romero how to play because they didn't want to make it look like. <laughs> What's so the first funny. thing, like, Will, if, if you had a budget of $500 million to help Manchester United, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, top place in the top three in the league next year, what is what is the first thing that you're doing? Oh. Anything. They, they say literally not even $500 million. They just say, okay, you can get 
one thing done. Like, it can't be like get messy or like Ronaldo. Obviously, like they're like they're not going to be coming mm-hmm. or whatever it would take to do that. Like, but like, what's one of the first things that you would do? To try to get Manchester United back on track. But you're saying we next year, the best coach. yeah, next year. They, like, <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? We go find the best. Find just the best coach. Find, I don't know who the best manager is. Yeah, I'm just well, gonna no. go outbid if I'm like too much money. If you're treating bees thing, but here's part of the problem. This is why this is what you have going on in Barcelona, because people want a change of the board right now. They just lost eight to two, so they fired their coach. But everybody's upset because they want the entire board to be changed. They want all of those people gone. So when B goes like right now, we'll treat you as like one of the board members who comes, you know, and says. We got five hundred million dollars, and we want to be in the top three next year. Yeah. And you take this to a coach, and he goes, "I need some time to build." Or, or if you want that next year, then you only gave me five hundred. I need a billion. Yeah, you know, or I need, I need this. If you're looking for short term, yeah. looking for short, term, I need Ooh. to be in the top three next year, guaranteed. All right. Well, I need the money to sign these five so, players. So you're saying take it to a roulette table. Put it on black and then yes. see if you can have one billion yes. dollars to work with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm saying let's go throw this down. No, I don't know. No, the first thing you be it's it has to do with signing players. If you're talking next year, if you're saying how do we get Manchester United back on track over the course of the next five years, then it's a completely different discussion. Next year, top three, it, end of story. It's sign. It's we need. Who's we the need player that you go after? Yeah, who's the pl- who's the striker that you uh, go after? Um, this uh, why am I not remembering his name? Uh, our Borussia Dortmund boy who's scoring all the goals right now uh, from Norway. I can't believe I can't remember his oh, name. A uh, little blondie. Oh, uh, uh, her, 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 it's something H, right? I cannot believe I can't remember his name, but regardless, doesn't matter. Henderson? No, no, no. No. Holland. No, no. Holland. Yes, Holland. 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 Oh, you guys should be embarrassed. I hit that. <laughs> no, you should know those things. <laughs> we should be perfectly <laughs> okay with you naming uh, one of the top strikers in the world right now. We should expect you to know that. Uh, yeah, Paul him. Scholes. I would go. I would go with him. Skulls head coach. You go with Skulls head coach. I don't think Skulls is interested. Anybody's. Interested Although his friends are already yeah. coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Do we want uh, Skulls? Solskjaer, yeah. I don't, I don't know if we blame Solskjaer. I don't know. Yeah, Ben Olsen, head coach. I think David Beckham, <laughs> David Beckham, head ben coach. Beckham's busy. He's busy in the U.S. signing World Cup players to play in your league over there. <laughs> he got Blaze Matuidi to freaking. Do you know that he freaking got Matuidi Tweety. to play for uh, Miami? And you know, it's only a matter of time. Ronaldo will play for Miami. Oh, Mark yeah. oh, these words yeah. right here. Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo will play for David Beckham's Miami MLS club. It is August seventeenth. Biscuits and tea. <laughs> it is August seventeenth, yes. twenty twenty nine eighteen a.m. Put it on the docket. What is a docket? Put the timer. Start it going. That's a great question. I don't know what a docket is. <laughs> So, <laughs> a docket just like I think a docket just a schedule for like a meeting for like a here. I'm like gonna bring a, that word back. Like a judge. All right. Like a judge. Like you, know, you have a docket where you have all the cases that you're gonna be going through that day. A docket. It's a document. A docket. Oh, you or got a it. label listing. Oh, you got it. Yeah. All right. Here. Uh, here definition. I got it. Yeah. Definition. A document or label listing the contents of a consignment or package. Yeah, it's a document or label listing the contents. Yeah. All right. I'm bringing back docket, baby. Docket. Put it on the docket. Put it on the docket. Put it on the docket. Just say it for anything. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just put it on the docket. (laughs) Like like you're at a restaurant and they say, yeah, would you like to pay cash or card? Just put it on my docket. Yeah, put it on the docket. (laughs) We'll we'll just figure it out Yeah, just put it on the docket. Yeah, we're good. (laughs) We'll let it it ride for now. Just go ahead and put it on the docket. We'll hit you up with that later. What year do we think Cristiano Ronaldo is going to play in the MLS for Miami? I was just going to say that. It's within two years. It's within two years. years? Twenty fifty-five. Wow. Yeah, I think it'll be two years. I think uh, uh, he'll play next year in Juventus. I think he'll play 
the year after. And I think that year this year after will not be as good as it should be. And I think it, I think he's going to leave in an explosive blow up. I think he's going to be in the MLS the same way David Beckham got to the MLS where you guys didn't know that he was upset about contract dispute with Real Madrid. And then you just woke up one morning and it's like, David Beckham has signed for LA galaxy. <laughs> and you're like, what? Whoa, what? And yeah, he didn't, the contract, the uh, dispute was going on. I think Ronaldo's going to get mad. He's going to do well and he's going to be fine. There's nothing gonna be wrong with him. Ibrahimovic can go mess around in the MLS for three years, go back to Milan and just pick up exactly where he started. Like there's nothing He's going to be fine. I just think it's Juventus is going to start to go. All right. We got to we got to start doing some something different here. We haven't won the Champions League, which they probably won't. That's and, true. So you, that's that's a really yeah. good guess cuz like I do I I do think that he shouldn't come to the US until he absolutely has to because just the level of play and all that kind of stuff he's not going to like it. Or he might. He might really mm-hmm. like. I guess he kind of does fit into the sit. Like he might just destroy people here, and it might be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think if you just come in and just bang goals, it's just like playing it's, like pick up games with your friends and getting paid millions exactly. and millions. Of it dollars might work for, out yeah. pretty nicely. Like he's because he's won everything club wise. Like what else? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think he could. He could. What there's, he there's stuff to do. There's plenty to to achieve in the MLS besides winning winning the league and then trying to if he takes his team and beats a Mexican team and we win our Concacaf oh, thing and they God. go to the we send an MLS team to the World Club Cup for the first time maybe he goes and wins it there it gives him something to do <laughs> yeah. you know something to chase the dude likes to achieve things that's it he's he's you know saying things in the news like hey Messi I really hope that you you know maybe leave your little your 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 crib. Yeah. You've been in Barcelona your whole life. Why don't you come try out here with the rest of us? Leave home. Wasn't well, there rumors that Messi's leaving anyways? Oh now it's always happening. Oh my god! It's because of those stuff and his contract. He only renews his contract. Yeah, he's not going anywhere this year. No, he's not going anywhere. Messi's staying put. I don't think Messi will come to the he's MLS. Not We're gonna try. I don't know who's gonna try. We're gonna try, and I think that's should be if if the MLS because we should we should just give give uh, Mr. Garber a call and just say when the time is right, Don, I need you to pool together everybody's money and just make this happen for America. Yeah, you gotta. We're all gonna need to take one for a team here, but it needs to happen. You need to have Ronaldo and Messi in the U.S. Oh, League. I had that discussion yeah. with J. Mike. You need to have. We're gonna take one for the team. How bad is it going to be? How could that set us back? We could get this to happen just a couple of years before the World Cup. Exactly. That's the perfect – that's what I was thinking is, okay, maybe two years is a little too soon for Ronaldo, but I, the circumstances that you brought up, I think it makes sense, just like what, what David Bickham did. But if they really wanted to make this like a long-term mm-hmm. play, it's like, hey, come in 2024, we'll get you on a six-year contract for a billion dollars <laughs> and just do whatever yeah. you need to do yeah. to get him here because like you said – the endorsement money, the the brand recognition, oh. the people that will become lifelong fans of soccer. You can't calculate oh what the upside of that kind of deal could be. You know, talk about buying a freaking NFL team for one hundred and fifty million dollars, and then it ends up being a billion dollar valuation in twenty twenty. Well, what does it look like if you invest eight hundred million dollars into Messi playing in the MLS for two years? Holy crap! Oh my god! Who the hell knows? Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, and it may be because now we have wait, we had two, so we have counting. I'm counting if I count. So 2020, so 2021, we got to finish this next upcoming season. Juventus is going to win the league, but they won't win the Champions League next year or this year. Yeah. They won't win it next year, I don't think. And so that would put us in 2023, right? Yeah, yeah um, that's perfect timing. Two. Yeah, that's perfect timing yeah, for it. Dude. I think 2023. Think about think, the hype. Oh, that that wait, would we've got. Wait, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm forgetting one thing. When's the World Cup? Oh, 2024. No, 2020. 2022. Sorry, 2022. It is 2022. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's gone after that World Cup. He's coming to the U.S. Well, he'll come we're during not having a World Cup in 2022. <laughs> yeah, it's late. What do you mean we're not having? <laughs> COVID's gonna 
be flying around. <laughs> COVID. Like... COVID in 2022. Yeah. I mean, it's still going to be. It's still going to be here. We're, we live with COVID now. It's the flu. Yeah, yeah. We live with this thing now. It's not going. It's not going to get eradicated. I don't, I don't think, think we're going to do anything about it, Tyler. I think it's just going to happen. Like, obviously, we have not really done too much right now. So are we really going to be doing anything for it two years from now? Three years? Like, no. Like, 170,000 well, people have died. But we're even... The U.S. is still going to be so fucked because all these idiots aren't going to take the vaccine. Oh, no. There's going to be... But maybe... No one, yeah, half people aren't going to take it. Maybe they'll just die off though, so that's, maybe it'll work out. It sounds work. bad, but it's just yeah. kind of that's the way the unit. That's why nature works. You know, if you're stupid, you die. That's kind of the premise. <laughs> and you can put that on the docket. But that's part of the issue, right? <laughs> put it on the docket. <laughs> if you're stupid, you die. Well, no, if you're, Let's tell Daisy. If you're the vaccine, <laughs> what? I don't. I would assume if I got the vaccine for it, I wouldn't catch it so if someone idiot sick idiot who didn't want the vaccine comes near me and someone who i'm with who also didn't get vaccine i'd be okay and then they both just have covid now except if you're on that early if you're on that early edition of the vaccine people because then you end up growing an eighth toe oh, this, is, and this, is that long, eighth. this is long term freaking yeah. i am legend we gotta, that's my biggest fear is that the movie with will smith i am legend great movie so if you haven't seen that uh a hundred percent agree. Out. Great movie. Great movie. That is the scariest scenario of what could happen here. And it's pretty much the premise of what we're dealing with is that, you know, they have like the cure for Alzheimer's or whatever, and people start taking this vaccine. And then all of a sudden we got freaking zombie monsters running the streets, you know, <laughs> eating your dog and shit. It's like, <laughs> let's be careful with this vaccine. Yeah. We, have, we have people that are going to be taking this and it hasn't been tested and they're going to rush it out. I guarantee it. You know? Oh Yeah. They're testing people. Yeah. There's like a thousand well, people think... right now that they're just like bringing in to give them coronavirus. They're like willingly getting it so they can oh my God. expedite the process of knowing how to fix the shit. So they must be getting pretty nervous <laughs> if they're doing that, you know? Ooh, that's scary. Would you do that? Wow. How much money would it take for you to go and get given coronavirus? I need I need to know some more. But why do they have to give somebody coronavirus? Why I don't understand why they can't just take somebody who's like old. I <laughs> I don't know. That's what up. I. It was on the fucking. <laughs> it seems like there's enough people in the U.S. who have coronavirus already <laughs> that it's not that hard to go find some people. It's really true. <laughs> Let's <laughs> infect more. It's yeah. really true. Uh, yeah. I oh can't remember God. what news source it was, but it was on. It was one of the, you know, CNN or. NBC or whatever the fuck. Yeah. But yeah, it's that's what they're doing. They're getting a thousand people in a controlled setting and giving them the old COVID. Wow. Just just a little just a little COVID never hurt nobody. I, just, I don't think there's COVID. enough. There's clearly not enough. Because you could die. And also Yeah, you could. But I'm in Sweden also and we don't have COVID here. We're all immune to it. So <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean we're more immune than Sweden is. Yeah, Croatia. but you guys went inside. We've had like 250 yeah, people. Yeah, but you went inside and you hid we from had like it. like 250. You hid from it. 200, 250. That's not bad. I'm not saying it's That's not, like not that I agree with you. That's not I just, bad. What That's, I think is that we've got Viking air hit, and Viking blood <laughs> rolling around in here, and we don't have to deal with COVID. Like, we're not afraid of it. <laughs> it's a culture thing. We're like... We go at it head on, and for some reason, America's America's like, yeah, we do that too, and like we're going out inside, but we're getting trashed. Like the U.S. is getting trashed Here's the by deal. the we don't care, we'll do it. Here's the deal: people in Sweden, they take care of themselves. They drink water and eat good food and <laughs> yeah. exercise, and and then we we can fight through this. We're gonna do, and then they go out and <laughs> they're fine. But in America, everyone's eating fucking yeah. quick trip taquitos yes. and drinking their Whatever oh fucking four locos and they're yeah, we're gonna fight this thing. <laughs> don't, don't talk shit about taquitos. Oh god, it's so Come true. On, like everyone in the US unfortunately has and even even the healthy people in the US, we all have pre existing conditions <laughs> just from being in the US. Like you drank surge when you were a kid, you had some sour patch kids when you're growing up, you ate honey nut Cheerios. Like we're all fucked. 
everybody's fucked, you know, and like even the healthy people. And then so COVID comes through and just wipes us out because like, Jesus Christ, how much sugar does this culture eat? And like in Sweden, they're like, oh, we have eaten. Yeah, we're fine. Oh my God. It's so, that is so true. That's the issue right there. And it tells us everything is that it's our immune systems Isn't that, are just so weak. Yeah. <laughs> so weak. And I always wonder about that because like I get really self-conscious about, you know, like why I'm a human that I'm supposed to be here and my body is supposed to adapt to like the climate and all this kind of stuff. But like my allergies, horrible. Like, yeah. I'm, aren't you supposed like aren't humans like supposed to just be able to be out and just like breathe in everything and be able to survive and live and be comfortable and all that kind of stuff. Like what, like what kind of, like what am I doing in my diet or like, what have I been, con- been conditioned to where like, I can't not sleep correctly without air conditioning, you know, like that freaks me out. Too much red five. You got too much of that red five. Red in your five. Diet. You got that Fuck. Blue six. <laughs> got some blue six. Or a little more of a yellow. Four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, who knows? But it's something like that. And I mean, we're half joking about the pre-existing conditions, but that is part of one of the issues with COVID. It's people you do have that people with diabetes, which we have Lots. in swarms. We have obesity, which we have Lots. in swarm like. And so like that's uh, that's not helping. And some of these other places also they have it, but then not to that extent. It's crazy. So yeah, maybe that maybe so that's maybe that's the key thing that everyone's missing here is that it's not that like it's the coronavirus is like the the worst thing to ever happen to the world because obviously other countries are being able to handle it okay. It's not really maybe about policy or about we're opening up too quickly or college students are stupid for going to colleges and throwing parties, but maybe it's just a huge underlying issue of everyone here is just not healthy and our immune systems are not built <laughs> to be able to even handle a fucking yeah, try. halfway viral disease. <laughs> try telling the American public they should change what they uh, eat. What? They can't even put on a mask for 10 seconds. Don't we do this though? We do try and tell people, but we also... How many times has the food pyramid changed in your lifetime? It's perfectly fine to eat Four. grains and... Ser- oh, sorry. Grains are bad. You have to eat kale. Uh, Kari, kale's bad. Eat goji berry. Oh, goji berries give you cancer. I'm sorry. Eat this now. Like we change it all the time. I don't think we know. I think the answer is we don't know. We know that sugar is bad. But apart from that, we don't know what else we're supposed to eat. Carbs are good. No, no, no. Carbs are bad. Red meat's bad. No, it's okay. You can go on the all meat diet. It's fine. Like we, I think, I think eggs have switched oh, back and forth maybe dude, 10 times. Right. In the past. Eggs are the just mystery <laughs> food. I have no idea what, what eggs are even. The documentary on Netflix says that eating an egg is like smoking a carton of cigarettes. Like that's what they literally. Sorry, what? Say that again. I forget what uh, what the series is called, but it literally they said they're comparing the eating eggs to smoking cigarettes. Like that's what you're doing to your body. Oh my god! What is that? Uh, oh my god! If you look at, it, let me try to find it. Yeah, but they'll they'll put out the same people will put out another one later that says eggs are the superfood of the exactly. World. They'll say, oh, it's full of vitamins, it's full of this. Then they'll tell you cholesterol is bad, and then we found out cholesterol is good. And no, it's this type of cholesterol. It's the LDL cholesterol that's good. Now, see, it's okay. You can eat eggs, and it's so like I I feel like you have to have some sort of understanding of your body. You clearly know, and it's also some common sense is necessary. As Americans, we know Dunkin' Donuts, and you wash that Dunkin' Donuts down with a Surge, a Red Bull, oh yeah, and a couple, couple of Cokes, of course. and you know, and then a Four loco for dinner. Yeah, and then you go. We know that that stuff is not helping. So, like, I'm sure there's almost ninety percent of the entire population could improve their immune system by just stopping the shit that they're doing. Like that they know that they're doing that's wrong. Yeah. The extra alcohol, the cigarettes, the the extra like those extra things, if they stop those, what would that do to the country? You you also have a whole issue of I don't think this is your generation so much will, but our generation was 
so much like protecting you from germs and everything oh, like oh wash your hands all the time like do all this do all this like don't go into the mud like yeah just yeah you guys where people then they they say like not exposing yourself to to just yeah i don't know whatever just not giving your immune system practice of course yeah which was yeah not a thing yeah you could i don't you could understand play in the that mud argument at all kid. like I, the whole What's thing that? like building up your like Oh, you need to not wash your hands after you go to the bathroom so that you can build up your immune system. Like that's something that like, you know, as someone who like, wa- I wash my hands way too much. And I've like, I had se- you know, severe OCD when I was in like high school where I'd have to wash my hands like five times each time or else I'd mm-hmm. be like freaked out and uncomfortable. But obviously, like, I mean, mm-hmm. I get sick, but like, I don't feel like washing my hands and stuff has affected my immune system in a way that like, it like hurt you know, like i mean i i don't wash my hands a lot and i never get sick i get sick maybe like once every other yeah, year I, mean, I, I think the like the point stuff yeah though the the thing that they're going with is that a lot of our so for instance people you strip away some of the good bacteria we have this idea against bacteria that started to develop after yeah probably you're right closer towards your generation where it was we have all these new types of soaps. We have these new types of things. We have you have bacteria and stuff all over you. It's just your body is it's full of this stuff. Yeah. Your stomach is full of all of this stuff. And we had this idea that bacteria is bad, and we started to strip all that stuff away. And all of our soaps do that, and they they rip it off our skin, leaving your skin yeah. more susceptible, most likely, to you know. A bad bacteria, not having an exposure, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. I get. I, I understand it. Yeah. There's clearly, once again, just like all things, it's gonna be a balance. It's balance. Yeah. Like, no, you can't live in urine for a week and expect to be. Oh, I'm boosting my immune system. I pee in my pants and I pee when I pee in my bed and then I go to sleep. <laughs> it makes me stronger. <laughs> pee is like, sterile, actually. No. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There you're you go. Yeah. Sterile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You can use that. Yeah. So I actually I wake up in the morning. I have a good, good sip of my uh, pee that I peed in my bed. I wring my bed out and and then I get up and go and then I rub my face full of mud. And yeah, I don't know. Ugh. It's a balance. It's just a it's balance. Everything is so extreme now. I think it is it, either. It makes me yeah. angry to really think that you think that, OK, I'm going to go take a dump wipe my ass, not wash my hands, and then go all of my day touching everything and touching my face, and, like, that's going to help <laughs> me be a healthier person. Like, no, like, that is not the message here. That is not the solution. <laughs> like, I don't want to... Here, I got a question for you, though. What did the ancient people do? There's no running water. How did they... And were they... I know we have diseases now that they did not have or and they didn't have the capacity to have because you just couldn't dump. They didn't have enough salt. They didn't have enough sugar. You're not going to be able to do that when you're yeah. a hunter gatherer or when you're in a society that doesn't have extreme riches. And even if you did have extreme riches, only a very small amount of people could go take a dump and then go to the running water. Except yeah. unless maybe Rome had great, they had great, you know, aqueducts and all that whole stuff. But like, what did they do? I thought those civilizations were usually just built on rivers. I think they were, but does that mean that they were just they were they didn't have antibacterial soap? Yeah, you know, and just go down to the river. So they just wash their hands. How are they? The the thing though is that like the people had stronger immune systems back then than we do now. No, I think uh, I think we have more autoimmune diseases now than ever in history meaning the diseases that we shouldn't that our our own body is fighting itself you know obviously we haven't we haven't eradicated i mean that's allergies sure that's, that's what allergies are I, allergies i don't know if allergies classify I mean, just, as an autoimmune yeah no that's that's just your i mean it's your body just like oh there's dust oh i don't think this should be here oh we're gonna shut everything down so more dust can't get in your nose and give you a runny nose and make you sneeze and i, I don't know if well, it's not really necessary it's like i don't know if it counts as yeah you're right i do i don't know how much allergies played a role yeah and like the, the thing to like think about is no. like can you really compare people's immune systems back like obviously if you were alive during that time you had a stronger immune system 
than most people because if you didn't, you died. We, we live in a time now where if you do, right. if you don't have a great immune system, we can figure out a way to, to save you and keep you alive. And you can live under these crazy circumstances of you get a, you know, back then you get a cut on your leg and then you die <laughs> because the bacteria get yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Whereas here, if you literally can live yeah. without having all of your limbs. You step yeah. on a peanut. <laughs> you eat a peanut and you die. That's the way it used to be. Like if you were had a peanut allergy and you ate the peanut, well, sorry. Yeah, you're going to seize up and die right there. Nowadays, we have EpiPens. So it's so weird. Yeah. I don't know. But there's, we clearly have gotten better at patching shit up. Yeah. We're better at patching shit and fixing shit up. But at the same time, we've created more nonsense within our, you know, these autoimmune. So I Googled and it's lupus, celiac disease, type 1 diabetes is on the rise. Researchers at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention have no idea why. So I don't, I don't know. And back then we've clearly extended the amount of, you know, the life expectancy has gone up tremendously. We've eradicated a whole lot of different things. Like we haven't eradicated poverty, but we've, we've made improvements globally. It's weird. We're going forward in some ways, but not, I don't know. Yeah. Well, people that are alive can spend money. So we're going to do whatever we can to yeah. keep people alive. But yeah, I don't know. It's pretty bizarre to think. Like, I, I just don't know if people have strong, like, it's really interesting to think about, you know, was that really going to set you up to, you know, washing your hands and not using, or not washing your hands, not using hand sanitizer, or not doing all that stuff. Is it really setting you up to be safer? Or, yeah, I don't know. I think no exposure. I think if I think if you have, yeah, because if you're a if you're a if you're a bubble boy, didn't was there a bubble boy who yeah, couldn't yeah. go out like he couldn't get exposed? I think if you're like that, I think if you live your life like that and you literally wrap yourself up in one of our strip club uh, plastic things and then you take it off and you try and run around like you'll be dead, <laughs> like you're gonna yeah. go, like you have no exposure to nothing. You have no idea how much. Like even though you wash your hands, I don't think you have any idea how much dirt and shit you have on you right now. Yeah. Like in your clothes, in the air, all this stuff. You are living in filth. Yeah. Everyone is. It's a level. So you can wash your hands all you want and you can get all that stuff out and probably will help, but you're still getting all stuff other. So yeah, I think it's yeah. probably some balance. Yeah. For sure. I have no idea. COVID, man. COVID. Oh. <sighs> Well, biscuits and tea boys, bad tea boys, bad tea girls. What are we again? What are we? The bad home bros, the biscuits and tea hombre bad boys. We need to, we need to legitimately go after a tea sponsor. Finally, like they can be small at start. We can ditch them. We can ditch them when we get too big or they can come with us and become big too. Yeah. But we need, we need a tea sponsor. The tea game, the tea game's wide open. It's the biggest market. That's bears of entry, very low. Get in there, baby. The tea game is so good in America. I just, I think we should just start our own. Uh, so sorry, Tivana. Are they not bankrupt yet? Yeah, Starbucks is closing all its Tivana stores. Okay, well. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Tivana looks like Tivana is not going to be sponsoring us. I'm saying all the tea companies going down, 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 jump in, go learn me tea while the market is suffering, bring the tea game back. Very easy. I just typed in. Okay. We got, we got, we got something here. All right. Okay. I typed in influencer tea and they've got the top tea influencers. So our goal right now, there's, 4,200 tea influencers. Obviously, our goal is to be the number one tea influencer in the world. Yes. Obviously. Yes. I don't see anyone that would be better. Is there uh, some British guy who's talking about how oh, raw, raw, bit tea? There's somebody who's tried every type of tea, and everyone trusts his word on if a tea is good or what not. What do you mean? Oh, you... Th- no. There, there's, just, there's a king of teas. Like a tea is expert. There? Are you saying this because you know, or... There, has there, there is. Has I want him on the podcast oh. immediately. Oh, definitely. 
T. From what I see here, all of these T, they're all food and drink type people. They're all... A T sommelier. Sommelier is a T specialist. Oh, a T T sommelier. I think they're... Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Right? Is there one? Uh, we get him on the podcast. Talk about teas. Yeah, teas experts. Let's see. We definitely need to get one. Oh, you can become one. You can learn how to become one. There's a tea sommelier course. Oh yeah, online. It's an online college course. Oh my god. Of course, there's one in the UK. Right, it's a bit of green tea. <laughs> yeah, this a bit of black tea. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm from fucking Blackpool. This is tea, <laughs> and this is green tea. <laughs> like that's all they do in class. Right, well, right. fucking <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all British, yeah, all British people. They, they. Whenever I, I do that, they're just like you emphasize everything like it's like a caricature i'm like i know because that's what you sound like to us <laughs> and they get, they're like no we don't emphasize all those words i'm like you think you don't emphasize all those words but that's how it sounds like and then they'll, they'll do american like johnny it's went to the store and he said and i'm like yeah we sound like that i'm like yeah we, we sound like that that's how we sound yeah that's how we sound but they don't want to they don't want to admit that they uh, sound they don't sound like that no it's not proper enough it doesn't sound as fine-tuned as they like to think that they sound. No, it's hilarious. Yes. We've had that happen so many times <laughs> where, we, where we do that, the accents of the British people, and they're like, that is a horrible, 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 horrible information. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, eh, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. And then what you see in the comments sections always, everyone who's not from Britain going nailed the accent nailed it but no one from britain will give us props <laughs> they'll never give us props on it God. but it's the truth like that's we can sound like you british, you know i don't know if you guys agree with this but like british people like they just seem very cynical like overall about like a lot of the humor stuff like the, especially with what we do i get a lot of feedback from a lot of people about things that we do and the the only negative <laughs> stuff i ever get is from british people or American, <laughs> American followed by Americans because Americans don't really get it. Yeah, much. yeah. They're like, "What the? What's going on here?" But I feel like, right? You know, for the most part, Americans like our stuff. But I feel like the British people, a lot of times, they don't like it. I don't know why. Yeah, they don't get it. They have to. They respect it to some degree. But yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, and British humor is hilarious. It's actually incredibly yeah. sophisticated, and it's really yeah. British humor is, is brilliant. Uh, but yeah, they, they can sometimes, I don't, eh, it's a little too creative, it's a little, <laughs> little too, but, oh, but about the, uh, about the cynical part, they know that about themselves. They'll yeah. talk about, uh, some of my, my British, they'll be like, yeah, we like a good whinge. They'll say, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't have a little bit of a, little bit of a whinge, <laughs> what a, bit of a whinge, that? you know, whinge, do you know what whinge is? Yeah. Whinge, whinge is complain is to complain. Like, yeah, we like a bit of a whinge. Yeah. And so they are cynical in that, like they'll. Yeah, yeah, they they know that about themselves. They'll they they so like it's a that's a strange phenomenon too. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll be Golaremi's. We'll be over there all the time, so we'll we'll get to know their culture yeah. even more. I mean, I work. Yeah, like I just kind of realized that over the past couple of years, like working with people from England, it's like very nice people to work with. I enjoy it. Like, there's nothing like wrong with British people, but like they do have this thing where it's like kind of negative and judgmental and it's like that's not something that like we would say here in america like if you're having a conversation about something right. that you created i wouldn't be like oh well isn't that a bit stupid or like so, like they just they're just very direct <laughs> and like they'll say something that's like oh yeah like that's kind of offensive or that's kind of rude or but they don't like <laughs> realize it you know yeah, yeah this dude at my work always makes fun yeah. of my yeah. socks every like every chance he gets he's like oh you're you're like those socks are horrible, and I'd be like, "Wait, what do you like? They're just socks. Like, what do you mean? Why do you why do you have opinions on my socks, sir? <laughs> they have opinions on everything like that, dude. I'm serious. Maybe it's just something I've experienced, but little. Yeah, I don't know. All let's the time. let's make it a point to yeah. Next time we go, 
Where should we go next time? Which EPL team should we? And this is a serious question. Which EPL team should we work with next? I want to work with Chelsea. I kind of like Chelsea too. I don't know. I used to not be a huge fan, but no, I don't like. Uh, yeah, I've always like kind of not liked him because there's this kid named Andy Van Busker that we played against. like he played on my team. I could not stand <laughs> the kid, and he was a Chelsea. What about Chelsea? Kid. So I just hated Chelsea my whole life because this kid liked Chelsea. <laughs> like I have nothing against Chelsea at all. I've hated Chelsea. Uh, like even when they uh, since broke about. Drogba was playing. I love Drogba. He was like one of my favorite players. Oh, yeah. But I hated him because Andy Van Buskirk liked him. Wow. Shout out Andy Van Buskirk. Yeah, Chelsea would be cool. Tyler, Tyler, we need a, we need some input here. Tyler's deep into something right now, like B. I don't know if you noticed this, but like obviously Tyler doesn't – He's Tyler, no, I've already checked Tyler has no this idea has that he has a certain two. face that he gets when he checks out, right? Yeah. So I've known him long enough to know yeah. when it is. And uh, so it's going to be on. I'll, Paul Lewis, make sure you throw on Tyler's face throughout this last five minutes every once in a while so that you can, like, <laughs> s- so people have an understanding of when Tyler's checked out. I've been, I've been looking at the odds of the, oh, of the Sweden yeah. matches today. Oh, the good old because PNT podcast. Yeah. He's just sitting there putting in his bets. We're trying to have a put out some great content for our classic. You only have three <laughs> minutes. You only have three minutes left that you need to keep your level of t- how long do you think you keep your level of attention tyler like how long is the longest that well of course it does but that's like what like so well, for this what? is part of the issue like like in a meditative practice the, <laughs> the point of keeping your attention is so you keep it on what you want to it's not that like we get a shiny red ball in front of you and you can pay attention to the shiny <laughs> red ball for <laughs> 20 minutes we know you can we get it it's to pay it's to pay attention to the things that you also necessarily wouldn't that's yeah, and I don't well, want to. That, like in class, like how would no, I no, no, pay attention no. in I'm class? I'm not saying something like, that's interesting. That? Control of your attention is the idea, meaning that if you, if we said you have to sit here and stare at this wall, all right, anytime we'll have we'll have uh, drive-through strip clubs coming, we'll have shiny red balls, we'll have soccer games, we'll have uh, food, all these things. Running. Your job is to stare at the spot on the wall, one single point, focused attention. Nine, I think you can do it for nine <laughs> seconds. Ninety seconds. I mean, I'd be. Uh, that's great. I wonder, actually, though. That's funny because I think you would actually. Have you heard of the famous marshmallow test? Oh, where you don't well, eat the marshmallow. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. not necessarily the test. That's the worst explanation of the test. Those so you don't eat the marshmallow, and then, uh, and then the test is over. Yeah. No, but see with that. That stuff, like with that thing, I could distract myself doing other. Like I would just start like messing right, around, let's my, messing around my fingers. Like, B, do you know, know the test? It. Yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, let's just explain it for the people that don't, because this will be a perfect little short clip. Tyler, the test is they put in front of you a plate with a marshmallow. Now the person giving you the test tells you, "Hey, you can eat this marshmallow now. Go ahead. Yeah. If you want to. However." I'm going to I'm going to leave the room right now. I'll be back. And if you wait and don't eat the marshmallow right now, when I'm back, I'll give you two marshmallows. Okay? I'm going to leave now. See ya. Now, are you going to eat the marshmallow or not? Honestly, I'd probably play with the marshmallow. Oh, so you'd be it. one of those kids. They they have those kids too. I would, I would just I would just like toss it back and forth just just to keep my attention for like whatever. You wouldn't but I wouldn't it. need to eat it. And honestly, eating it would probably be the worst because then I would have <laughs> nothing to to do for the next. Because the only thing for you to do in the room would be to, you're waiting for <laughs> the person to come back. You couldn't eat think about anything or do anything else. I wouldn't have an object to so you distract need me. To distract you. It's amazing. I'd eat the marshmallow. I think I'd yeah. eat the marshmallow. And then when they got back, I would negotiate terms to get that second marshmallow <laughs> with an extended contract. <laughs> <laughs> using 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 your, your massive leverage of having eaten the entire <laughs> nothing. <laughs> having, nothing. Yeah, sorry. Right, so listen, I ate the mushroom, but listen, here's how we're gonna do things now. You're gonna go get me another bag of mushrooms <laughs> based on yeah. I can say, no, no, your data point, you gave us our data. Yeah, we, we don't know you anymore, sir. <laughs> you can leave. 
Uh, oh my god. So to end off the podcast, hilarious. since Tyler's been researching these games for the last ten minutes while we're trying to yep. have a podcast. Tyler, can you just end us off, uh, get some bets on the docket for us, and uh, let us know what we should be betting on and who we should be betting on and how much. Just give us your three top games. Uh, so hi, this is, this is a, a disclaimer. Crazy, this is, oh, excuse me, this, this is a isn't disclaimer. Even... Gold Ramey FC, uh, Gold Ramey Incorporated is uh, not liable for any bets placed on uh, Tyler Beck or uh, <laughs> Professor B. Billy or uh, the, whatever – uh, we're not liable. Don't sue us if you lose your house uh, or your car or if you bet a family member, we're not going to replace them. So, all right. Anyway, hey, uh, that was our lawyer. Yeah, go ahead, Todd. <laughs> so this is some crazy thing I think I'm going to try today. So the Swedish Alafenskin. How do you even say that? Alafenskin. Alafenskin. There's been a crazy amount of draws. I don't know what's going on. I feel like every game I watch ends in a draw. Looking online, there's like you every single game. On. Like two out of three you know games exactly are ending in draws right your, now. If you thought process, if you thought about it for a second. Well, yeah. You know. I mean, it, so I'm thinking today there's five games, and I'm just going to throw two dollars on every game to end in a draw. They're all like two and a half to three to one odds. And if two of them hit, it'll be positive. And then if multiple, if over two out of the five That's hit, it. then it would just be even better. But and if one, only one hits, then I still would only lose. Sure, I'd lose like you'd be yeah two dollars anyway. So I just I think it's like kind of a, it's an interesting tactic. What is the one thing in betting that you would uh, that you would make the most? What gives the greatest odds? And I'm not talking about win loss. Like there's always like these really weird. Who gets the first corner? It's, it's uh, understand. It's, no, it's. I would say it's watching a sport you understand and live, oh, live betting. Oh, live betting, yes, yes. I saw it, yes. Live betting is hands down. Sometimes stuff, live. especially NBA live betting, oh. if the team that's favored goes down like 15 early, oh, yeah. they get some crazy yeah, yeah, odds yeah, on them. True. And then it takes like, and then in like a two minute, three minute span, they go on a 16 point run and they're back in the lead, and you have them yeah. with like a nine point spread to cover, which yeah. they're going. It's crazy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I would say live betting. Because there was a guy, uh, this is in, yeah, the Balkan, Croatia, or something like that. One of those crazy games where it was like 1-1 and there was only five minutes left. And he supposedly went in and just, it was like one of these crazy Champions League games. And he went in and bet like $5,000 or something crazy uh, for the next goal for a team to score. And there was like three minutes left in the game and he won. Wow. Like it's just like the odds that they give you in live betting like that is just yeah no no one's gonna score in this ninety minutes have gone it's been like this yeah you you can also uh, it's really popular in tennis I think they've cut down on it called spot betting where people are go to the games and on their phones they'll be betting and they can actually uh, call out the oh points before it's updated on the yeah on the thing huh I'm like. On the whatever, so they like they see it like right away. So what they'll do is they'll try to find an umpire that's like really slow, putting in the numbers into their controller. One to like every now and then they say they find one that needs to keep like their phones messed up or whatever it is. So they keep need to enter in a passcode. So he's really slow reporting it. So they'll just you'll actually have because you can't be in there on a phone like constantly doing something. So they'll have someone there with like a uh, long hair and a wire with a mic and then oh they'll be relaying God. it back to someone at home and then they'll be trying to put it so they'll bet on each oh point God. as what quickly as possible. But you can also hit those. I mean, you can hit those on uh, soccer games also if you're at a soccer game and a team gets a PK or a really oh. dangerous free kick. You can sometimes wow. get in a live bet before that actually gets reported wow. that they got a PK. Wow. I mean, there's definitely things. I just use it straight as a source yeah, of entertainment yeah. just because it makes it so I actually enjoy yeah, watching the games. But you're addicted to gambling, <laughs> you have a problem. This is us coming to you to ask. I would say I'm addicted. It's not a problem, though. <laughs> That's how he solves it. Losing, losing five That's bucks. actually an interesting thing. Yeah. Losing five or two dollars. Yeah. I'm addicted. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you tell me. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say. I'm fine. Like I'm, yeah. That's actually, that's an angle that uh, all addicts, uh, I think yeah. we've given them a great, 
great little tool here to use is like, no, they keep they they would always deny their addiction. No. And not that, no, that is the See, mistake. That's the mistake. You just deny that it's because it, 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 something's not a problem. Exactly. Then why does anyone care? Accept it. Do it more. Tell your family members. Prove that you can be uh, successful yes. on it. Yes. Yeah. Everybody at the intervention is wrong. We don't have to prove you can be successful on it. You just have to prove that you can not be destructive yeah. on it. See, now you're also. Yes. American school, all right. I don't have to be successful if I if I lose if I lose fifty dollars over the course of two months. No. Like it's not no, really. No. That's that's healthy. Like, Although yeah, whatever. the things things change. Uh, if you are able to bet, like Michael Jordan, who's like, all right, who's gonna? <laughs> yeah, we got a we got one hole of golf here. He bet three million. Everything and every. Never. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael, I don't know. <laughs> Mike, uh, mm, I'm all right. I don't know. Like, can you imagine that, dude? He's just such... Especially because uh, you, know you know he has Bugs Bunny yeah. under the course. He's got Space Jam dragging rules the ball just working. It. The entire, yeah. yeah, dude, that dude. Uh, he'll be on the podcast soon, so it's fine. Yeah, we'll talk to him about it. He's fine. Who do you think the yeah, whatever. We should let's call this here because yeah. We're actually gonna have a guest. Yep. We'll have a couple guests. All right, bad tea boy, girl. Uh, bad tea party boys and girls. So we don't have a name for you yet. See you later. Comment you down little, below. You little biscuits. We love you. Yeah, shout out to Jay though, by the way. Patreon. Shout out to Jay. Jay was commenting in the last one. I don't think we've responded. Shout out. Yo, yo, Jay. Later, people.